you got there in the corner who has to come around so the camera will get you? <laughs> no, okay. Here. What's your Let's name? Get okay, girl. my name is Millie Benko Rooks. I'm married to Greg. And uh, I can start off. My grandparents moved out to a farm on West 130th in 1937. Mm. So uh, my father had to commute to finish his schooling at Lincoln High School in Cleveland. So obviously I wasn't born then. I don't think so. Mm. Uh, so there was a little house on the farm and that's where I was raised. And uh, I started kindergarten and I uh, had it at the city hall in Brunswick upstairs. Oh, I, I went for a half a year then, and then we had to, due to my dad's job, move to New Philadelphia. Oh. So in the middle of the 10th grade, we moved back here due to his job. So I didn't start to Brunswick High School till the middle of the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. So it was a little more difficult for me, but um, I it was, you know, you just look back and you, you didn't even think of, change, you know, your friends, you have new friends, right. which I always try to feel as a good thing because you're more rounded, you've got all different friends. And uh, of course, living on a farm, we had to do help my grandparents with their farm uh, chores. And that was new. So, um, but uh, I was in band and did the bells and the xylophone and also choir. Nobody was in choir, huh? I can't no, say. Oh, you were, okay. okay. Yeah, I was in I choir, <laughs> and we did I a lot of nice uh, chorus uh, concerts. Millie, describe how you were in marching band playing the glockenspiel. <laughs> the glock, I can't even remember. Did you play glockenspiel? I did. <laughs> oh, that? Oh, is that? Okay, yeah, I had to hold it up and go like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like carrying a keyboard down the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mr. Sagal was a wonderful uh, band director. Oh, yeah, Terrific. Mm -hmm. But at that time, we were at Edwards High, in the high School, and in order to go to band, we had to go Walk through Byzantine <laughs> to the opposite end to the band room. So that allowed for a lot of extra time to get to there. You know, but Mr. Sago, he was always he was he was really a good band member, you know, and uh, I mean a good band uh, director. So um, we went to the football games and played for them. And uh, that as far as like uh, gym, we ha we could only uh, play half court, like on a basketball uh, court, and that was our the extent because there were no things for uh, girls at that time, which I understand, you know. Uh, other than that, how you things know, have changed. Yes, science. how things have changed. Fortunately. Yes, yeah, how things have yeah. changed. Yeah, and I've basically, you know, I went to Bowling Green. I came back, and then I got married to Greg. And after years in Parma Heights, we moved back to Brunswick, and we've been here ever since. So uh, we've seen a lot of change in growth, and it's good and it's sad too. So, but it, that's right. the way it has to right. be, you know. But, uh, yeah, we lost a lot of so land, it seems like. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I still think there's a lot of farmland. And, so. of course, our neighbors were the Benjamins, so Noel and I have <laughs> had a long-standing uh, friendship. <laughs> very long. <laughs> <laughs> very long. And very, a lot of stories to tell, but I can't tell them on tape. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> and other than that, you know, it's, it's it's a good experience and it's really nice to see everybody. Everybody looks healthy and that's the most important. So. Yeah, amen. Well, okay. thank you, Millie. Oh, and, certainly. And what's your name, Miss Linda? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Linda Rising, but I'm a Nosman now because I got married in between. I have a twin, Darlene. Um, she's in Oregon, otherwise I'm sure she would be here. Um, you guys really, you covered so much. Yes. That is just amazing. We moved out here like in 57. We were in the fourth grade and we moved out from the west side of Cleveland and these two kids, one of them was really a bully. He was horrible. Don't They moved at the same time. <laughs> so we got to school and the bully was still there. Wow. But we, it was the same deal. We were in like Byzantiner for fourth grade and then we went on split sessions um, and we were in the town hall. Mm -hmm which I remember fondly. That it was fun. It was cold, 
but it was fun to be in the town hall. And then Grafton Road, which you said is what now, Kidder? Then it went up, you know, and, and of course Bob Madden and the whole group came over with us. Um, there really wasn't sports for girls when we were in school. I mean, it just like, it didn't exist. Um, the best thing that ever happened was when we had pep club and then the drill team. Oh, yeah. So the drill, the drill team, team was. I forgot about me oh too. yeah, <laughs> that it was great. The drill team was wonderful. Who started that? You know, you I don't remember. Were you I tried to. Were you yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. yes. But I can't remember who started it. I just remember that it was so much fun to learn mm -hmm. all the drills. You know, and the marching and the mm -hmm. precision of it. You it had was, a picture of that? No, I do not. And I looked in the yearbook and I couldn't find a picture of the drill team, which yeah. is figures, you know, because well, women yeah, were pretty well start, ignored you know? in the 60s. Kind of sad. Well, I was in for two years, according to the yearbook, so I must have joined as soon as it started. So we were already probably juniors yeah. um, before we had something like so, that. You know, Les Fuller has yearbooks. I wonder if uh, Gary's brother, I wonder if they're in one of those. Well, they're on the website too yeah, okay. of those years. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, good. so maybe yeah. maybe it's yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but I remember, <laughs> you know, going to the games and watching, being a cheerleader just for one year, I think, was all. And then I decided I didn't have the bubbly right. personality that you needed to be a cheerleader. <laughs> so I said, no, I think I'll do other things. <laughs> like, like taking Latin in school, yeah. because we have to have Latin in order to go to school, and we would pass notes. Remember passing notes to each other? That was the best part of Latin class. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 And it was like, oh my God, if I saw a Caesar or Bruce one more time, you know, crossing this river and that river, it was... It, it is a beautiful language, but I didn't know that till I was an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't need it anymore. I didn't need it anymore. Mrs. But Towsley always had good sturdy shoes. Oh yeah, that's right. Because I always had to put my eyes down at the floor so I wouldn't get called on. And I spent a lot of time looking at her shoes. <laughs> that's right, that's funny. But people, the kids don't pass notes in class anymore. What do they do? They, they do they're on their phones. Oh, they, they have their phones on their phones. They have their phones on their phones. They have their phones on their phones. Before they get to high school, they can't have their phones in school. In the class. So they're using their Chromebooks and sending notes so they don't have to pass them, which I think sort of takes the fun out of sending notes. <laughs> but they yeah. yeah. used to make those little things. <laughs> Yeah, oh, they, they still yeah. do that. I think the kids yeah. still do that. And the slam books, remember and the those? Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about those. But it was fun. <laughs> when when I, we moved down here, there was a lot of farmland, and construction was new. We were like the only house for a couple blocks, you know. And the big farm was across the street, and Charlie was the caretaker, <laughs> but he was always drunk. He <laughs> sat on the milk box. <laughs> outside he did and he would walk up to the Cape Cod which was the only bar in town remember and he would walk up and then he'd walk back and he was caretaking but that's how we got our dog because somebody <laughs> dropped, somebody dropped <laughs> the dog <laughs> off and she whelped in the barn and so we got, we got our a cat dog. that way yeah she was pregnant <laughs> oh yeah see that's at the end of the drive but the end of the it, drive. Was, <laughs> it was just Different. Yeah. Dave Goodyear was our bus driver. <laughs> you know, he also played Santa Claus one year, and there was the ditches in the front of the house. The oh, deep, nice. deep ditches. Oh. He went right in the ditch. It was all snowy. He was up to here in oh. snow. We had to pull, pull him out of the ditch. He would remember, I bet, if he said something to him even <laughs> now. City. It wasn't a city. Did yeah, no, it was, it was a, um, right, it was a village yeah. when we moved here, in, you know, <laughs> in um, 10, You're so right. it was it a was. village, yeah. But I, I loved high school, I loved our teachers, I think we had really good teachers, and I was trying to remember who taught literature, and it was Mrs. Goodwin. Oh, yeah. She's oh, yeah. the one that gave me the love that I have for Shakespeare and theater, because she taught Shakespeare. And everybody had a part, right? So you didn't just read. Yeah. You each had a part, and you read that part, at which brought it alive. Because I wouldn't have been exposed to it mm -hmm. otherwise, you know. So she she was 
she was a fabulous teacher as far as I was concerned. And I, I do think that, I think everybody's pretty well covered a lot of things, but I do think that going to school out here, really from elementary school and even through high school, um, those friends became good friends even now. You know, I'm friends with people, John and Karen, I mean, I've known like forever it seems. Yes, I know. You know, but it, the school did prepare us for going out into the world. Yes. You know, did. and leaving this shelter here, um, it gave us the skills that we needed. Um, the, the teachers were, I thought we had, not that I had a comparison, but right. I thought that the teachers were really good. It was interesting being a twin in the school and constantly, we looked a lot more alike in school than we, we do now. Mm -hmm. And people Especially would call younger. Oh, when you were younger, younger, they would always call us by each other's names and they'd be dragging you off to class and you're trying to tell them they have the wrong person. You know, it was funny. You know, it was upsetting because they would like argue with you. No, you're Darlene. No, I'm sorry, I'm Linda. You know, that hasn't changed. But it, 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 really, it really was fun, and it was even more fun because, well, and then Warren went and married my cousin, so, you know, then <laughs> Warren became yeah. part of our family, yeah, well, like, for, family. for good and bad and whatever, but it was, you know, part of the family, which has been, that's, it's fun. It, those kinds of things, are, and we walked everywhere, like, there was no buses. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, our we parents walked, didn't. We had one car in a family. Well, we did too, remember. and that was that was it. And so you would walk if you did things after school. You'd walk, and we were like at least a mile. It was at least a mile from our house to the high school. Well, how about um, the prom? I think in those days you had prom in the high school. Yeah, and that's we right. did all the work. Yeah, right. remember the junior right. class? It was fun. Right. It was fun. Did all the work. We were <laughs> all on the prom committee, yeah. weren't we? Yeah. 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 Everybody yeah. is. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, no, we had to put our time in. Right. right. <laughs> I think we learned stuff. And when you we said memorabilia, I don't really have. I have this football. I'm not sure I want to give it up <laughs> because my this was Kenny Kettler's football, who I dated through high school. And it's got 1965 on it, and of course the VHS is oh, on here. Neat. My well, daughter, my daughter remembered this. I didn't, um, because I used to show her stuff. And this I found when I was looking for everything else. <laughs> I know this is right away when you wasn't that color then, was it? <laughs> well, I think it was white, probably. Oh. <laughs> So I accidentally yeah. found that, but mm -hmm. but it was fun growing up out yeah. here. It was a good the school. Girls have white you know, yeah. Before I forget, I think one of the most things no. that I remember is <laughs> people used to come down to that pump at 130th and 303 and pump for fresh water and mm -hmm. take it back yeah. to Cleveland. Oh, and then boy. after a while, there was a little fruit stand behind it. But you'd always go down there. I mean, we used to walk through my brothers in buggies down 130th. Now you'd be killed. I mean, it was just yeah. the traffic. But there used to be that pump, and people from Cleveland would come in and get their fresh water. <laughs> well, we used to ride horses down. We rode them on 303. Yeah. We rode them on Carpenter. I mean, it was like. And uh, really, on 303, we probably shouldn't have been doing that because those trucks were coming through. It was like a thoroughfare for these semis. But we rode those horses down 303 anyway. You couldn't do that now. It I used to ride. I used to ride my bike down 303 yeah. to Valley City. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I know. It was right. just. It was just Did different. Really but it was. Hand. It was fun growing up. And I think at least most of the people that I still know have been successful in whatever they did in their lives or have done or are doing. But we got prepared by our parents, our teachers, our mm -hmm. school. Different world. The kids, yeah, yeah it was totally yes. different. Yes. And different um, the influence was much stronger. The computer wasn't there, so you didn't have all of that interfering with right. you know, what you were learning and what you were doing. The very basics. So, yeah. Uh, Linda, you had a good one when you were saying about uh, teachers that influenced us. Mrs. Galvin influenced mm -hmm. me to do my homework because I was very, very, very <laughs> lax. I got an arthritic condition uh -oh. right now because of her. 
Hey, 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 <laughs> and and Gordon Markowitz <laughs> and I you always used to be in trouble with her. And I think she enjoyed beating us. <laughs> so when I when I was going through stuff and I pulled out my yearbook, which I haven't looked at for a very long time, and my daughter just said, Oh my god, you have the newspaper from when JFK Yes. was shot, uh, yes. and I yes. saved it. It's there from all these years ago. It was in the Plain Dealer. That's so nice. I have that. You know, I know, I and I was in, I remember where I was in was chemistry dramatic. class. I was from, in chemistry uh, class when they made the announcement. It was very traumatic. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing yes, like that had ever happened. But you guys did, and I don't know who all did this. I just want to digress for a minute. Because Kennedy's big thing was physical fitness and 50-mile walks. And you guys did a 50-mile walk. I remember Kettler went. I think Bob Madden went. We did a 25-mile. The girls did a 25-mile. I don't remember doing that as girls. I remember the guys doing it. Southland Shopping Center. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought, you guys are nuts. And so <laughs> you didn't have good shoes. You didn't train for it. You just went out to walk the 50 miles. I think one of the dads was picking up the stragglers one at a time. I do remember walking to Stryville to catch the buses. In the yeah. Street. Oh, yeah. Because you know, that was the only place they had. Where was the bus? At the bottom of the hill? No, by the, where the city hall is now. Oh, yeah. no, you went that, that far. far. Oh, my wow. goodness. Well, we no the buses bus came here. No buses No, came. we walked down Stony Road Hill and yeah. all the way to the center of town. Wow. And we took the bus wow. down. The bottom we got to hear yes. our last panelist. Oh, oh sorry. George. <laughs> sorry. I am. Bring it home here. <laughs> George <laughs> Keckle. <laughs> Something must have happened in 1957 because we removed the Brunswick at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have twins, and she knows my twins. Yes, oh, I do. Really. Isn't that nice? Uh, lived over by Grafton Road School. So we got to go to that field early on when they started to build it, and then I think it was a year or so later when they did Babe Ruth. Wow. And who were the announcers? Mr. Hamer and Paul Rumbaugh's dad. Oh. Yeah, Paul Rumbaugh's <laughs> dad was a big confuser. Big announcer, yeah. He's such a, he's yeah. Such a yeah, Mr. Hamer yeah. was a Robot very, very good man. Yes. Was that Mr. Hamer? Yeah, yeah. Did baseball? I think we played. I think you and I went on. Then after that, mm -hmm. we went uh, American Legion, and I forgot there was Bradley another League. one. Bradley. And then we went into uh, Lakewood B. Yeah. Didn't you go in with it? I thought so. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, we we kind of uh, went up. Uh, we had some very good opportunities. Right. And then high school was football and uh, track for me. And baseball was out outside because these guys have already mentioned there was no baseball in the, right. in the school. Uh, no soccer, huh? No, no, no. 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 That's a big wow. one now. <laughs> Influenced me would probably really be Kincaid. Oh, oh was probably, yeah. And he just died here not too long ago. Mm -hmm. um, and probably Myers. Myers and I stayed in contact for I liked quite Mara. a few I years. Yeah, I liked Miss Myers. Uh, I think it was the snore, too. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of the history, yeah. I guess. Everybody's yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Talk about uh, what did you play? Football and, and uh, track in high school. I didn't do the basketball. I wasn't tall like they <laughs> <laughs> But you were mighty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, worst experience when I got my nose busted in the middle of the football game and my jersey <laughs> was all red. My mother wondered what that was all about. I don't remember. What year was that, George? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> That'd be 10, 11, or 12. One is... <laughs> <coughs> you guys took a beating. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It, yeah. <laughs> but it was it, it was at Brunswick. It was a home game. Oh, that I remember. Oh my God. Because Mom saw the shirt, <laughs> yeah. you know, all right. Would she get hysterical? No. no. I mean, this was after the fact. But, that would have been my son. I'd oh. Upset. I'd go after that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. What else? I don't remember. 
you remember about the shot put where oh. we needed a 16 pound shot put to practice to practice and George went home and his dad went to work <laughs> probably Al mm. well, he was at a co at the time was he at Al no 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 he was at uh, a small place on St. Clair steel improvement oh, okay. it was but, a forge coming out but he made us a 16 wow. pound wow. shot sledge yeah, or uh, oh, and then shot I don't put. know if you were in on this or not but we and we would go out there and practice like in April. You know, it'd be snowing and everything. You got this iron ball that's cold as could be on your hand. So somebody come up with the bright idea of running it under hot water. Oh. You, were you in on that? No. They got the, I think it was Girk. No. They got the idea of running it under hot water before we went out to practice. So it was nice. It was nice and warm. You know, we threw it. So then we had a track meet scheduled. And they tried to solve that problem, so they got a hold of one of them benzomatic torches, you know? <laughs> and they're over in the corner heating the shot up before the meat. I go there and they're ready to grab it, and you could fry eggs on it. <laughs> I know that wasn't me. <laughs> I had to go around begging the shot put off of some of the other teams oh because God. ours was sitting there steaming. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, excuse me, you have a good story about Mr. Kincaid, about him helping you how to do the, the shot. shot. And also, we built our own track. Yeah. And we didn't hurdles. have a track. Uh, we used to travel down Diana Drive and run our yeah. sprints and things of that nature. <laughs> so it was, you know, and then one day uh, they had dumped uh, cinders on the oh. downside of where the old football field was. Down over the hill. Yeah. 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 And everybody had rakes and shovels, and we built a circular track wow. around there. And we were so proud of it being you know, young kids, and we had our own track because most of the schools that we were at had their tracks. Oh. But we had to build our own, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, those are the memories, I think, when you, you could look back and the coaches were very involved in helping us in that way. And John's got a great story. Uh, Mr. Kincaid. When, when Mr. Kincaid first came to Brunswick, he had n no experience in coaching track. And he came up to me and he said, John, he said, I don't know anything about the shop one. He said, I don't know how to help you or whatever. He said, but anything that I can do, you know, I'll help you with. And I was probably ninth grade at the time, maybe 10th. And, uh, so I went into the library. Mrs. Brunskill helped me more than anybody. Oh so she went and got a book. She went and got a book on shot putting. And it was the Olympic, an old Olympic book. Oh my God. And uh, I didn't realize the techniques they talked about. They were probably about 50 years too old, but that's the one I used. And uh, so Kincaid, Kincaid said, you know, help me any way you want. So if I needed something, so I asked him, I said, there was a coach over on the east side of Cleveland that was a real good weight coach. And I said, could you get me an afternoon to go over there and practice with that team? So he did. He drove me all, all the way over there. Wow. He called the coach, drove me all the way over the east side. I spent the whole afternoon with them. And that coach, in one afternoon, I, I literally added 14 feet onto my throw. Wow. wow. I went, I went from throwing 35, 38 feet to 49 feet. Wow. That's and it was tough. just because wow. I was using a technique that was back in the Depression. <laughs> <laughs> but it still worked. So that, well, it nice. didn't work as well as the new one. <laughs> I have a funny one about one of our classmates. I used to go to all, most of the sporting events, and there was a track meet. It was in Medina. And Tim Hoover was a pole vaulter. And oh Tim Hoover gosh. went up and he split his pants. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Like, I do too. Do you? <laughs> I was in Medina, and there he was. Oh, oh. yeah, Mr. Hoover. There was a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but pole, pole vault, too. You remember when he broke the pole? Yeah. 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 Let yeah. the games yeah. begin. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked the pole right in half. Yeah. And, but the, the funnier part is he had to buy his own poles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no oh, it was real gosh. cold that day, 
and uh, fiberglass uh, it was got stiff and so everybody was waiting because this is the first time he's using the pole everybody's around uh, oh everybody says and Tim says out loud let the games begin yeah. and he's, yeah. running <laughs> down, <laughs> he's running down the track yeah. lane to hit the post and boom oh. and he falls right on the stuff oh. <laughs> and everybody just kind of went in awe, but oh the fact is, it was it was a great laugh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was that was oh, one of the highlights there. The, the one thing too is uh, my daughter, uh, who played, uh, went to Brunswick. Uh, she had also Mr. Kincaid, so it was kind of fun because I had him as my coach, and here he was my daughter's oh, coach yeah. for you know 25 years later or so, uh -uh. you know. But that. Uh, yeah, it was sad to see him pass on. I went yeah. out to his funeral yeah, home, and uh, yeah, he was a he was a very very likable man, mm -hmm. you know. And never, I, 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 he was uh, like uh, uh, he was good to everybody, whether you played sports or not. Mm -hmm. was really I good think that teachers and coaches had a a different type of commitment then because oh, yeah. my kids went so. to Brunswick schools and now my granddaughter is in Brunswick schools and mm -hmm. while everybody's helpful the really committed teachers are few and far between because you can pick them out as your kids do different activities you can figure it out but it felt like all of our teachers then were committed to us and to the education and to to us as people yeah. Already, and we were kids, but we were already right. people. I think schools are just too big. It's hard for teachers. Sure. Yeah. 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 When we were in seventh grade, Gary was in on this, but Mr. Pierce would pick us up in front of Zimmerman's store at six o'clock oh, in the morning. He had a 49 <laughs> Ford that he pulled all the seats out of it, and he had it filled that, with right? he had it filled with saws and everything because he did contracting work yeah. outside mm -hmm. of school. Oh, oh, and oh, so oh, Gary oh, and I had to go in there and sit on all these saw blades. <laughs> 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 with saws in it. He was our he was our shop owner. Yeah, but they don't have shop anymore. Right, he was our shop owner. Yeah, there's no no shop, no home ec. He this was time, always that's kind of that sad. rubber hose. Yeah, no, no I was that. always I slow. I was always <laughs> slow <laughs> off the <laughs> off the mark. And so what he did was he took me off by myself, my and he had this rubber hose. <laughs> And when he yelled set, I had to take off and he'd start swinging that rubber hose. Oh, Better get out of the way. And if I didn't get out fast, yeah. and he did that with me probably for about three months. <laughs> well, Mr. Pierce was my seventh grade gym teacher. And we had gym in the old um, auditorium at the high school. In the showers, you had to walk up these stairs, the showers were up there, and he had like, I don't know if it was badminton or tennis racket with the girls, and he didn't hit us, he just used to swing us. And I said, I used, he was a friend of my brother's, and I used to say, Mr. Pierce, remember who I am, you know. And so he'd stand, or he'd come halfway up the stairs to the shower, they say, you girls taking a shower up there? You know, of course we weren't. We had the water on. You know? <laughs> he was great as a gym teacher, man. He worked the heck out of He was a good shop teacher, too. Great. Yeah. He and Stober. Mm -hmm. oh you, you'd, be in, you'd be in shop, and all the, all the machinery would be running. Pierce would be in the wood shop. Stober would be in the metal shop, and they'd be arguing about who was the better linebacker, or, or who was the better football <laughs> yeah, player, funny. Sam Huff or Jim Brown. <laughs> and then the they one did. time, my parents hired Pierce to build their garage. And Stoper worked with Pierce in the summertime to build garages. And the two of them were out there. Pierce was working on the underhang, oh. and he had a claw hammer, 
and they're arguing about who has better football, West Virginia or Ohio. And Pierce kept hitting himself in the forehead with the claw hammer. Blood was running down the side of his face. <laughs> and they would never stop arguing. Our, our neighbors would listen to them. How funny. funny. Oh, you guys, what else? Well, well are you going to speak? Yeah. No, I'm the moderator. <laughs> oh, oh, Nola. Oh, Nola. Well, what I remembered, which is really a stupid thing to remember, and I just remembered it today. <laughs> what didn't you point at me? Well, we, no, well, we were at your house. <laughs> we were getting ready for prom, so mm -hmm. we were plucking our eyebrows, oh, no. <laughs> but we put the pencil on first. You know? Oh, we no. We put the pencil on and then started plucking. <laughs> oh, All the eyebrows <laughs> were... <laughs> 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 <came off. laughs> it was when I look back at that, you don't remember that. No, of oh, course not. Oh my God, that was so traumatic. Those makeup secrets of high school makeup. <laughs> yeah, that was very traumatic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. Well, I can guess. Can I just say one thing? Oh, there are three of us here who are married to classmates. Classmates. And. Patty is married to Gary Fuller. Millie is married to Greg Brooks. And I'm married to John Castley. So. Well, is that a fond point. memory or is that <laughs> 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 Why you that out? Well, enough that's said. That's yeah. up for another discussion, <laughs> right? <laughs> that reminds me, you got to watch, there's a thing on the website and it's, you, you know, Families who like settled Brunswick and my family was one oh, of those. Yeah, oh yeah. Very very nice. Nice. <laughs> and so we did this the thing. Bullers, the Chitsies, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Chitsies. And yeah. you know, one of the things was back in the horse and buggy days, everybody married their neighbor. And one oh. of the things when I did the presentation, one of my favorite things is I put up this like eighteen fifties map of Brunswick. And then I highlighted the names. It's because all these people intermarried. And, oh, you know, they married like the people that were in the next property. And it's a good thing we didn't do it in our day. Yeah. Yeah. You and I would be married. Yeah. And not you. <laughs> but anyway, it's like, you know, that still was sort of going on yeah, in our generation. Yeah. It just wasn't brought out. Wow. Yeah. So, you got any tape left? A little bit. <laughs> so, anybody else? Yeah. Just one thing I'd like to mention, and, and I don't know if anybody else had this experience, but we used to have a custodian by the name of George oh, Kolonowski. Yeah. Yes. And George, one of his responsibilities was the locker room. And he would come in after we'd been out playing in mud and everything else. And uh, I, when I was a teenager, I was going through the normal ups and down, emotional ups and downs, you know, and George would always take time and sit down wow. and, and, and nice. talk with us. <clears throat> and matter of fact, Richard Damquist started calling him uncle. And so mm -hmm. we called him oh. Uncle George. And uh, he was probably, you asked one of the questions about who was one of the most meaningful people. Yeah. And I would say he was. Oh. He, he, he sat and he talked us through. You know, whenever Karen was being mean to me in high school, <laughs> George was there. Never the other way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I could tell some stories. But I would, you know, I, I'd like I'd like to mention his name because yeah. he, nice he was tribute, an important John. person. What a nice, that's yes. a very nice tribute to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. because Otherwise, who would know? I don't know. Yeah. I just remember, I just remember, remember George. George. Yeah. You know, it was, no, I have no idea. It wasn't a principal. Uh, Kolonowski, or, you know, I think, was, was his last name. <laughs> That's what you had to do. Uh, no, not extended his last year. <laughs> okay, these were. I, I, this was him here. He right. Always had, he always right. had a little mustache. Right. Oh, yeah, I remember. I just remembered George, but I didn't know his last name. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't really either. Right. That, and then uh, the other, well, the other people that I put down that are important to me yeah. was, and f for a strong reason, but the most influential people on our team was Doug Lawnmower oh, and Bob yeah. Madden. Right. 
And the reason I say that was Doug suffered from, I think probably cerebral palsy, I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but he had a spastic condition. Yes, he did. And, mm -hmm. and he went through more pain because we, we'd go through, the, we had this, we called it the Naga knocker. We had to run through it and get the ball and keep our heads down. It was like oh, these geez. four by fours that were going across. And Doug would go through that and he'd have a spasm and he'd jump up and smack oh, his forehead. Oh, and With it, the helmet was on. And, yeah, his still, helmet was on, right, right, but still. still, still and right, even when we would nice. scrimmage, you'd go to block him and he, he'd kind of come into you but then he'd have a spasm, and he'd jump up, and, and of course your helmet's right in his stomach. Oh. And then, and and Doug never complained, and he always had that And he smile. didn't get into that many games either. No. I mean, you always practiced. Yep. He always. was always nice to people. Doug and, Longmore yeah. was And Bob Madden nice. came out for football. Now you all know he's got a prosthetic limb, <laughs> and his, his leg was cut off just above the knee when he, I think, went an infant. Yeah, he was little. And and he uh he came off of football he wanted to play football and he he came out and i can remember it was after his first practice we were undressing in the locker room and bob was taking his prosthetic limb off and he had to put a sock mm -hmm. over it mm -hmm. and then lace it tight it was like a, a like a and it was bloody it was just soaked with blood mm -hmm. and bob went through that i don't know for about a week wow. or two it was two a days, and Shackleton finally talked to him, and said, "I mean, he he was through the skin with the uh, irritation," and Shackleton finally convinced Bob to become a manager, because he wanted to be part of the football team. So, so Bob was a manager for, for quite a while. Oh, yeah. Well, Bob came here like in the the sixth grade because we were brand new at Grafton Road School. And whatever that game we used to play was kickball or something. And he'd be running around in this big circle, and Bob kicked that ball, and his leg came off of the ball. Everybody, <laughs> we all just stood there. It's <laughs> pretty dramatic. It's it was great. very dramatic. <laughs> You know, well, I remember Bob oh, when I first uh, started school, and I told you I was I didn't know anybody, yeah. and I was nervous and everything, and I sat in front of him. And he was always teasing me. And he told me, he said, I, did you know that I could put a knife in my leg? <laughs> I believed him. I said, no, you can't. He said, yes, I can. And he did. He stabbed his leg and I screamed. <laughs> I, uh, he did that in geometry class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Maybe it was a protractor or something. Yeah. I don't That's know. what he did with us in the eighth grade. Oh he had you a protractor. Oh. Yeah, I think that was his way oh, of that, uh, well, well, making out with the girls. Oh, that's funny. Well, yeah, do you guys it. remember, and this was at graduation, and I'm sure we all know this, Ted Poole, um, I think that now he would probably be in special classes all the way through school, but he went through high school with us, and he also worked as a custodian, so he was there all day long. And when he went up to get his diploma, yeah. we gave him a standing ovation. Yeah. Yeah. I never I forgot I that. that. I was think he was 22 yeah. years old. He was yeah. older. Yeah, he yes. was a lot older. Yes. And we had, there were a bunch of us, we did, we did this in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Tex was sitting there with us, and he was talking, and we said, Tex, we're going to get you through school. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you remember that? I remember that. And and so we cheated like hell. Like, <laughs> okay. Can you edit that part out to cheat? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. And, and that's why I mean everybody went oh, crazy and we made it. Yeah. yeah, it was that was very exciting. That was a big life lesson um, to see well, him and, graduate. And such an improvement from when we were in school to how it is today with oh, these yeah. kids. Right. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Just to yeah. say that. You know, Brunswick has gotten, you know, everybody's gone along and, and, and we give a lot of special efforts to these kids. So yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's but wonderful. nobody had it back in those Nobody days. did no. then. Yeah. No, yeah. none of those laws had been passed. Right. Right. Almost everybody in our class, which was such a nice thing. Oh, yeah. And, you no, know, you're right. they, not today. No, mm -hmm. they do many. So it's many. just different. Well, Lorraine Haymeyer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's right. That's yeah. right. I thought about that. 
Mm. It was a different kind of life. It was a good life, but well, it, it was not a very still, good life. I, I still want to hear what you participated in chemistry she seminar. Here, <laughs> she's my daughter's daughter. She's got <laughs> in the yearbook. There's a story. What is this in story? In the yearbook, <laughs> she's got her activity. <laughs> and on the bottom was one year with chemistry <laughs> seminar. <laughs> and I don't know what that was. <laughs> you don't know where it came from? I might have been the only one in chemistry <laughs> <laughs> Me and the guy with the burning arm. Yeah, it's something on the list, right? <laughs> That's funny. Excellent. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I need, I need another activity here. Well, I, think, I think she just funny. put that on there so she could get into nursing school. <laughs> I can't remember. Did you have to have that to get into school? Yeah. Chemistry yeah. seminar? Well, I know you have to have chemistry. <laughs> I know you have to have chemistry <laughs> seminar. <laughs> I did. I, John was my partner in chemistry. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's how I got into nursing school. I gave oh, yeah. his name. <laughs> That's funny. George, did you have uh, Mrs. Farkas? Oh, yeah. Mrs. Farkas. <laughs> yeah. Good shoes. Another woman with good shoes. What did she teach? She taught history. No, I don't, I don't think I did teach. Oh. Well, she used to talk about the Euphrates River and Egypt and all these places that were so foreign that I never heard of before. And over the past even five well, years, they are more and more in the news, um, and I'm like, so I think of her every time. She one was of at the cradle of civilization herself. <laughs> she could have been, but she was a very good teacher. She was, you know, what did she teach? I she taught like history. Just history? Um, just history. Mm. Was it junior? We were sophomores or juniors by the time we had her? But she was, it was world history is what it was. yeah, and it was to me it was amazing because I never heard of those places. It was they were so foreign, and now they're in your everyday vernacular. You know, so lots of things have changed. <laughs> So, well, geez, thank you guys. You are now part of history for sure. <laughs> and Even though we've been part of history for years. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's on tape. It's going to be there for, you know, the we world wide right. web to yeah. see. And at the end of next week, you're going to get an envelope for all of you to mail your diplomas back to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Please. You got to find it first. <laughs> oh, mine is probably up in the attic. Ooh, yeah. I don't, ooh, I don't yeah. know where mine is. I didn't throw that away. So. Uh, thank you very much for thank doing you. this. Thank you. And it was interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will contact you again to help out with the Historical Society in some way. Some people get contacted a lot. Like Millie can. <laughs> we get paid next time, right? Uh, huh? no, you need a volunteer. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right, yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, Poor Gary, he got, yeah, got yeah, sucked yeah. into the oh, big one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had a question for Patty. You mentioned no. that your brother... That